Captioning for Red Sox Baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Aflac, Dunkin' Donuts, Verizon, W.B. Mason, and the Yaki Foundations. is hotter than the Texas Sun with all everything. A-Rod and the player of the week, Carl Everett. These Rangers can run it up. <laughs> Pedro is back on track and he's 6-1 in his career against the Rangers. The Red Sox have taken their magic show on the road. Let the good times roll on. Live from the ballpark in Arlington, Texas, Nesson presents Boston Red Sox Baseball. Tonight, the Red Sox take on the Texas Rangers. Hi, everybody. I'm Donald Orsillo. As always, joined by Jerry Remy. Well, the Red Sox, after 19 games in their own division, happy to be playing somebody else. Texas happy to be playing somebody else, too. They've been playing the West, and they've had a tough time. They're hitting a lot of home runs. They're second in baseball in home runs, but has resulted in a lot of runs. They're 11th in the league. Same problem as last year. They do not have very good pitching on this club. Good way to start the road trip. Pedro Martinez on the mound tonight for the Red Sox. Pedro will be opposed by Chan Ho Park. We're back with the starting lineups of the first pitch from Texas after this. Boston Red Sox baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. More than 2,700 nonstop daily flights to 59 destinations all across the country. By your Eastern Lexus dealer and the new 2004 RX 330, putting the world on notice again. And by Citizens Bank, not your typical bank. And good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the ballpark in Arlington as the Red Sox open up a series against the Texas Rangers with mostly cloudy skies above the ballpark in Arlington as they are expecting some rain at some point tonight. But uh, the Red Sox hoping to get the full game in tonight. Let's take a look at the visiting Boston lineup. Johnny Damon at the top of the order in center field. Todd Walker bats second at second base. Noel Myers at shortstop with Manny Ramirez in left. Kevin Millar at first base. Trot Nixon out in right field. Shea Hillenbrand at third Third base with Jeremy Giambi is the DH and Jason Veritek riding the four game hitting streak bats ninth. Texas Rangers defense is brought to you by your Boston area Lexus dealers. It'll be Hank Blaylock at third base. A Rod the shortstop. Michael Young at second and Rafael Palmero the first baseman. Left to right Kyle Everett Ryan Christensen and Juan Gonzalez. Chad Kruder behind the plate and on the mound. Chan Ho Park. Start number five on the season for Park. The record stands at one and two, but a 7.02 ERA's had a lot of problem with walks. 14 walks and 16 and two thirds. He's got 10 strikeouts and opponents hitting 302. He's one and zero in a square against the Red Sox, but didn't pitch very well. Gave up six earned runs in five and a third innings in the only start that he made a year ago against Boston. Basically. He has been a bust since coming over here from the uh, L.A. Dodgers. Plain and simple. Yep. Let's take a look at the umpiring crew today. Randy Marsh has the plate. Sam Holbrook at first base. Paul Schreiber at second. And Angel Hernandez, the umpire at third. Take a look at tonight's game notes brought to you by New England Toyota dealers. The Red Sox 16 and 8 against the Rangers since 2000. American League home runs. The Yankees have 39. The Rangers 35. The Red Sox 26. The Yankees and Rangers 1 and 2 in baseball in that category. And Pedro 6 and 1 with a 1.46 ERA. That's in eight starts in his career against Texas. Where available, tonight's broadcast can be heard in Spanish by using the SAP function on your TV set. Buenas noches, amigos. Now, this is the coolest I can ever remember coming here to Texas. Now, this is nice, Don. Now, you know, next time we blow into town, it's going to be about 110. <laughs> so enjoy it while we can. <laughs> Well, it is, uh, well, let's say 69 degrees here at the ballpark tonight to begin the evening. And most in the short sleeves as Johnny Damon stands in and takes ball one. Johnny Damon at 247 so far, four homers and eight runs batted in. Chan Ho Park coming into this outing, as Jerry mentioned, uh, so far it's been a tough start for Chan Ho Park, really, with the Rangers since coming from the Dodgers. 
And the high 702 earned run average coming into tonight's action. Seems like the old story for Texas has been the same. A lot of hitting. They'll score a lot of runs. But there's always been a problem with the pitching. And that is very much the case this season. Did he go? They'll check it third and no, says Angel Hernandez. Red Sox will see the fastball, curveball, slider, and changeup from Park. Now, when he was in the National League, he was up above 90. Very seldom will you see him above 90 with his fastball. Usually about 86, 87. He walks Johnny Damon to begin the night. And the Red Sox have the lead man on as Todd Walker makes his way to the plate. Todd at 278 so far this season. Walker has reached base safely in each of his first 16 starts. There's tonight the Red Sox play game number 20 of the season and bring their 13 and 6 record into action tonight. Three games back at the Yankees. Well, the Texas Rangers have done nothing but play in the AL West so far this season, and they're 8 and 11. And they're just three games back at the Seattle Mariners in what likely will be a very tight knit affair in the American League West from top to bottom all season. Jan Hope Park, 29 years of age. Swing has him in the hole, nothing in two. See, that's the change up there. That change up was at 83. Now his fastball has only been at 86 or 87. <laughs> Just enough here to have Todd Walker off balance. I would expect the Red Sox to take a lot of pitches early in this game. The control problems well documented for uh, Chan Ho Park. Walker slices this foul down the left field line. Chan Ho Park career has 90 victories. He's 90 and 64 in his career. That spans 250 major league games. You might remember he was the first Korean born player ever to play in the major leagues. Debuted back on April 8th of 1994. In the air to right field. Juan Gonzalez on the run heading back. That is up and it is going to one hop the wall. Johnny Damon being sent around by Mike Cubbage standing at second base with an RBI double goes Todd Walker and the Red Sox already lead it one to nothing. That's just a terrible pitch there by Chan Ho Park. Now he makes them look bad on a couple of change ups. Oh no ball two strikes and tries to throw the fastball by him and with an 86 mile an hour fastball right down the middle of the plate that's not going to fool anybody. Short hop that wall out there at about 377. And the Red Sox have the quick lead. So just two batters into the game and the Red Sox have that quick lead. After the leadoff walk to Johnny Damon the double by Walker. Good for Todd's ninth RBI of the season. And Omar carves the first one foul off the right side. The other thing Don is the catcher in this game Chad Kruda the Rangers signed him just to catch Chan Ho Park. He's got every one of his starts. They had some success when they were with the Dodgers, but they're carrying a guy just to catch Chan Ho Park and nobody else. <laughs> and a guy that doesn't bring a lot to the table, especially at this stage of his career, 38 years of age. Nomar lifts it to left. That'll fall for a base hit. Todd Walker moving up 90 feet to third base, and the Red Sox have runners at the corners with nobody out. Now Garcia Parra, he gets the change up and he puts it on a line into left field. See, there's not enough difference in the velocity, fastball, and change up to really fool hitters. Not enough change in the change up, huh? Well, no, not, <laughs> not enough zip in the fastball. <laughs> Here's Manny Ramirez. And he had 311 as a result of his four for five day yesterday. Four hits for Manny Ramirez. 
And nine for his last 19. Lined out of the reach of A-Rod into left center. In from third comes Todd Walker with the second Boston run. And the Red Sox out to the early 2-0 lead. Well, Manny yesterday was four for five, and with any luck could have been five for five. Shannon Stewart made a great catch on him against the scoreboard. He jumps on the fastball, a line shot right by A-Rod, and uh, right now, this is like batting practice for the Red Sox. Channel Park has not been a mystery so far. And his already action started out in the bullpen uh, for the Rangers. Here's R.A. Dickey in the bullpen right out of the gate for the Texas Rangers. Still nobody out in the top of the first inning. And this will bring Oral Harshizer out from the dugout. The pitching coach for Texas to talk to Chan Hall Park. Now he's coming off a couple of decent games. His last start was against Anaheim with six innings. Gave up a couple of earned runs. Got a no decision in the game that Texas eventually lost. The bullpen gave it up. He got a win against Seattle in a start before that. Five innings. Only one run given up. They won that game 4-2 to two and it cost the two terrible starts to start the season against Anaheim and Seattle. And this is starting off terrible tonight. Only had one career start against the Red Sox. Ended up being 1-0. and oh, Earning a win in his only start of game. The Rangers won 19-7 to on August 1st here at the ballpark last year. Gave up multiple home runs in that outing. Johnny Damon, Omar Garcia Parra, and Brian Daubach all went deep against him last season. Damon has scored here in the first inning, as has Todd Walker. Down the line off the bat of Millar. There's an out at third. The throw to first in time for the double play. So a much needed double play for Chan Ho Park. Hank Blaylock, the third baseman, with the four shot at third and then the throw to first, two down. Yeah, Malara's been struggling some recently. That ground ball taking Blaylock right to the third base bag. A nice, easy five unassisted, the, the three double play. Malara now one for his last 14 and two huge outs uh, for the Rangers. Well, here's Trot Nixon. It's the start in right field tonight. Nicks it out after the first one, sends it to right field. Juan Gonzalez moving in, and he'll take care of it. Could have been a lot worse for Chan Ho Park in the inning, but the Red Sox get the game's first two runs, 2-0 two Boston. Back in Texas, the Red Sox off to the early start with a 2-0 lead. The Texas Rangers coming to the plate in the bottom of the first inning. Michael Young at the top of the order leads it off the second baseman. Hank Blaylock is off to a terrific start at third. A-Rod, the shortstop. Rafael Palmero at first base. Juan Gonzalez in right. Former Red Sox outfielder and left fielder Carl Everett, the player of the week over the last six games at 476. Ageless Ruben Sierra is the DH. It is Ryan Christensen in center field and the veteran catcher Chad Cruder bats ninth. And doing the pitching tonight for the Red Sox, Pedro Martinez, start number five. The record at one and one. That win coming last time out against Tampa Bay. Seven innings, two hits, no runs. Six and one in his career against Texas. So Pedro has the two nothing lead to work with right out of the gate tonight. The 0 1 to Michael Young breaking inside. Young at 273 so far in the young season. And that's in there for a strike this time on the inside corner. Might see a few more of those curveballs tonight from Pedro in these warmer conditions than the last time he worked uh, against Tampa Bay at Fenway. It was cold that night. Michael Young swings and misses that one up top and there's the first strike out of the night for Pedro. Let's take a look at the Red Sox defense brought to you by the Boston area Lexus dealers. The Red Sox are currently fourth in the league 11 errors in 19 games. Hillenbrand, Garcia, Parra, Walker and Millar in the infield. Ramirez, Damon and Nixon in the outfield and Jason Veritek behind the plate catching Pedro. One down here is Hank Blaylock, who's had a terrific beginning of the season. He is the league leader in batting average coming into tonight's action. 
Hitting at 421 and atop the American League. Ends up being second overall in the major leagues. The major league leader is Jim Edmonds of the St. Louis Cardinals. The 1-0 missing up top. 2-0 now to Hank Blaylock. This is a guy that hit only 211 a season ago for the Texas Rangers and spent a lot of the year with Oklahoma, the AAA club for the Texas Rangers. But somehow has caught fire here now in his second season with Texas. Yeah, most of his work has been at uh, third base, making his 14th start. He made one start at second base. That's a big second baseman right there. <laughs> <laughs> Try to move him on a double play. <laughs> He's had just one strikeout in the last six games. And he won't strike out this time. He'll walk. And the Texas Rangers have their first base runner of the night. Here comes A-Rod. Rodriguez at 292 so far. He's got seven home runs and 12 runs batted in. The home run title has him tied right now at the top of the home run totals, I should say, with Alfonso Soriano with seven and his own teammate Carl Everett has seven as well for the Texas Rangers. Broken back grounder towards Nomar. The second for one, the throw to first is in time. Nicely done, 6-4-3 double play that ends things in the first. Two-nothing Red Sox. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy back in Texas as the Red Sox have the 2-0 lead. We move to inning number two. And the bottom third of the Boston order to bat against Chan Ho Park. Ellen Brand, Giambi, and Veritek in the inning expected. Chan Ho Park was a member of the Dodgers first in 1995. Was with the Dodgers from 95 through 2001 for signing here in Texas. Grounded left side, Blaylock on to Palmiro for the innings first down. We were mentioning uh, earlier in the open, Don, about the offense for this uh, Texas club. Now, they've hit a lot of home runs, but it has not translated into a lot of runs. They're 11th in the league in runs, and they're having a terrible time scoring with, uh, hitting with men in scoring position, just not getting it done. Texas ranks second in the majors with 35 home runs. It is four fewer than the Yankees total. For Buck Showalter in his first season here at the Reigns for the Texas Rangers. Buck, of course, had been the manager for the Yankees for four years and the Arizona Diamondbacks for three years while they played. Two years waiting for them to play. As Buck was actually hired in Arizona two years before the Diamondbacks would actually be on the field for their first game. And some have said that he is truly mellowed at one point a uh, very big disciplinarian and very forceful figure but uh, things have mellowed him a little bit to things like doing color analysts uh, for ESPN that'll tend to mellow you Does that mellow you out yeah it's good to know <laughs> it's in there for a strike to Jeremy Giambi it's mellowed you out I heard you were extremely intense prior to this job <laughs> Off the glove of Chan Ho Park, Michael Young gets it, and he throws out Jeremy Giambi, two down. It's funny, you know, you got two guys now sitting in the studio. You had Buck Showalter there last year, and of course now getting another managing job where he belongs. And you got Bobby Valentine now at his spot, <laughs> who I'm sure will be very quickly back on the field as a manager. Well, Buck was in the booth a few times last year visiting and a uh, terrific guy. We're very happy for him that he has this job this season. And yes, he does have experience coming in as an analyst. He's going right to the press right guide. To the media guide. <laughs> Two down for Jason Veritek. A quick visit to the Red Sox media guy. Down the line, handled in the backhand by Palmero. Canho Park is there. And he enjoys a 1 2 3 inning for a change. We played an inning and a half from Texas, 2 0 Boston. Boston Red Sox baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Bob's Stores. At Bob's, we know our customers and the brands they live in. 
by Coors Light. Cole down easy. And by Volvo, the official vehicle of the Red Sox. Great sight right there to see Tony Kloniger in the Red Sox dugout. Back is the pitching coach and on the road trip. Weren't sure before the game whether Tony would be in there or not. Kind of left it up to Tony as to whether or not he would be in uniform. And they had let Major League Baseball know if Tony was going to be there for the night. And Tony back in there. This is lined right to Millard first. And Rafael Palmero is quickly erased to begin things here in the second inning. What is Palmero? About five home runs away, I believe, from uh, exactly. Is it 495? Yeah, right now, 495. Jerry. And when he first came to the big leagues, the Cubs didn't think he'd ever hit home runs. Wow. He's kind of an opposite field hitter. I think he's hit a few. <laughs> he has. His 495th on Saturday. And he is at five and holding right now as the Rangers return home after a six game road trip that they were on out west. Now Pedro got him this time. Here's Juan Gonzalez, another home run threat of his own. Sends it in the center field for a base hit. Texas Rangers have their first hit of the night. Now Gonzalez hadn't had much success against Pedro, only two for 12. And one of those two hits was a home run. Gets that fastball, gets the fastball from Pedro. Looked like a two seam fastball and takes it up the middle for the base hit. Well, here comes the player of the week in the American League. He batted 476 this last week with six home runs, eight RBIs in six games. And Carl Everett. So far this season has played the way that he did in the first half of his first season in a Red Sox uniform really for the first time since then. Set a club record by homering in each of his last five games and was recently involved in kind of a strange thing in Oakland where a fan actually hit him in the back of the head with a cell phone. In the air, back by the backstop. Veritek will give it a look, but no chance for Jason. And you can see clearly there in those first two pitches what Pedro trying to do to Everett. Everett right on top of the plate, and Pedro trying to throw the ball right inside, right underneath the hands of Kyle Everett. It's funny, we got in early last night. I was watching the news, and Everett was being interviewed after his last uh, game, uh, I guess it was on Sunday. And more, he wasn't happy about the schedule. <laughs> he said, whoever's making up this schedule should be fired. <laughs> Never did mince words, uh, Carl Everett. Pretty much whatever came into his mind came out of his mouth. As again, Pedro backs him off the plate. That's always been kind of an issue also in leading to many of the arguments that Carl has had. His placement in terms of where he is to the plate, always on top of it. Not as close as we have seen him in the past as he faces Pedro here tonight. But still pretty close. This is a way this time to Everett. Two and two. After three fastballs inside, Pedro tries to pick up that outside corner. Just missed. We heard from Jerry Nairn tonight before the ball game, his manager last year. And he said he had no problems with Carl. And Carl played hard every night for him. Well, he did that in Boston, too. Mm -hmm. Seems like there is less of a media contingent here for the Texas Rangers. And that appeared to be where Carl had the bulk of his problems with the Red Sox. He was always kind of a tough guy to figure out, I thought. He was always very well-spoken, and you'd catch him sometimes, and he'd talk to you forever, some days. But other days, he would be in his moods and certainly had some pretty major mood swings in his time with the Red Sox. Runners off, and Everett fouls it off into the Texas dugout. Well, everything seemed to start to go downhill with that episode with the home plate umpire, the headbutt. And uh, it seemed like everything kind of snowballed from there. And then you're right, Don. I mean, down here, it's... You know, maybe a lot of the same stuff, but the, the media focus isn't quite the same. People don't care quite as much. A 
Everett hanging in there, making Pedro throw a lot of pitches, and now Everett will back out. First off again, Everett strikes out, throw down to second base in time. Struck him out, throw him out to conclude the second inning. Second strikeout for Pedro. We play two from Texas. Red Sox have the 2 nothing lead. in Texas in the top of the Red Sox order second time through against Chan Ho Park and might be surprised to see Chan Ho Park still in this game of the way he started tonight in the first inning the Texas Rangers after four batters had action in their bullpen but he has calmed down to have a very quick and easy second inning he's actually strung together five in a row That's what he's getting outs on right now, the changeup. I believe all three outs that were made in the second were all on changeups. Now the 2-2 two -two to Damon. That's foul back. And then below us. Still 2-2 two and two to Damon. How many Damon at? 310 We're at the ballpark at Arlington. Eight home runs. Seems like the ball carries pretty well here, especially when it warms up. And it really does that here in Texas. They play a lot of night baseball in Texas, not many day games as a result of how hot it gets. <laughs> you know, last year we were here, it was uh, tipping at around 1, 105. Fouled off the left side, backing out of play, and Damon wastes another. Chan Ho Park from South Korea and now makes his home right here in Arlington, Texas. Full count to Damon. Usually signed as a non-drafted free agent. Chan Ho Park by the L.A. Dodgers back in 1994. Remember the Dodgers from 95 through 2001. And he comes back. The strikeout Johnny Damon first strikeout for Chan Ho Park. Well for every run of the Red Sox catch stealing this season on Nesson you have a chance to win a Lojack stolen vehicle recovery system. Log on to Boston.com slash Nesson and enter the date opponent and runner's name be a chance to win the Lojack caught stealing sweepstakes. Six in a row now sent down by Chan Ho Park and it brings up Todd Walker who doubled his first time and came around to score Boston's second run. Chop towards second base and Michael Young. Quickly two down. There's that change up again to get the ground ball out. So that, that pitch right now, obviously, the best he's got to offer and he's getting some outs on it. Oh my goodness, Jerry, our friend Jackson has dropped off some goodies for us. Yes, it's always Texas time. We know we're here when Jackson Chase is here. He's the head chef at the ballpark, and he always takes care of us. We got ribs, oh. and we got, uh, what do we got, shrimp? Shrimp. Large shrimp. Nomar lifts it in the air to shallow left as Carl Everett comes on in and takes care of it. Very quick and easy inning for Chan Ho Park all of a sudden cruising right along. Two and a half done from Texas, two nothing Red Sox. Boston Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by your Lincoln Mercury dealers who invite you to come in and see the full line of Lincolns and Mercuries today. And by Lojack, the only auto security system that was designed to actually track and recover stolen cars. Lojack, keep it close. On to the bottom of the third inning, bottom third of the Texas order. Ruben Sierra, the DH, to lead it off. Ruben at 2.20 so far this year with a home run, two runs batted in. 
And he belts one foul back below us. He's now started six games in left for Texas, five as a DH, and one in right. Pretty versatile guy who seems like he's been around for a very long time and has 277 home runs in his career. A wild swing at Pedro that time. Fourth all time on the Rangers hit list. Yvonne Rodriguez at the top of that list. It does seem strange coming to Texas and not seeing uh, Rodriguez behind the mm -hmm. plate. Gets a hold of this one, sending it deep and far to right center, but Nixon moving over. Shy of the track to take care of out number one. I don't think Pedro got that quite as high as he wanted to. Veritek gave that sign for the high fastball up and out of the zone, but it stayed just above the belt and a pretty good ride given by Sierra. But the ballpark will hold the baseball. And just a slightly above the belt. Got it pretty good, but just underneath it some. One out here in the last of the third inning, and here comes Ryan Christensen, the center fielder. He just got called up a couple of days ago. Uh, Glanville's on the disabled list for the Texas Rangers, and uh, Ryan Christensen just getting the call. Uh, Back on April the 8th, he's played with Oakland, Arizona, Milwaukee. And there are his numbers in 12 games at Oklahoma City. Since coming up, he has now made seven straight starts for the Texas Rangers out in center field. That's with one out here in the last half of the third inning. There's ball four to Christensen, the second walk given up by Pedro Martinez tonight. Now, Pedro's got underneath a couple of pitches, both with his fastball and a couple of times on the breaking ball. Uh, elbow dropping just a little bit, causing that ball to lay a little bit flat up in the zone. There's the 38-year-old veteran catcher, Chad Kruder. As Jerry mentioned earlier, is the exclusive catcher for Chan Hall Park. Yeah, he's hoping Park pitches another 15 years. <laughs> Just one for 13 so far in the season for Cruder at 077. And as far as throwing out base runners, he's 0 for 5 in that category. Pedro again dropping that uh, right elbow and getting underneath that fastball. And 2 and 0 to the number nine hitter, Chad Kruder. They draw it 1 and 1 coming into this outing tonight. Tony Cloninger in the dugout tonight, Red Sox pitching coach. Tony has actually not started his treatments yet. That'll happen when the Red Sox return home from this Texas Anaheim swing. And then uh, they'll see how much Tony can do at that point and how he reacts to those treatments. And as a result, uh, Goose Gregson will be around uh, for a while longer for the Red Sox. But great to see Tony in there tonight, back in the Boston dugout. Quickly 2-2 two and two now to Cruder as he had been ahead 2-0. and oh. Cut fastball that time uh, from Pedro, working down and in on Cruder. away and he doesn't chase full count 
tough call here for Showalter. Did he send that runner on the 3-2 count against the strikeout pitcher? Banking on some contact from Cruder if you do. Had to strike him out, throw him out last inning when Everett struck out. Pedro fires over to first base and back in plenty of time was Christensen. Pedro does a good job holding on runners. He'll uh, change his rhythm. He'll hold the ball for a long time. He uses a uh, quick step off to try to freeze the runner. And when he makes a pickoff attempt at first base, he gets it over there with pretty good velocity. Long pause. The runner does go and the 3 2 car foul back to the backstop. So. On the 3-2 pitch, Christensen was on the move. Joe Walter has been consistent in that area so far tonight. Now one thing you can't do against Pedro, you just can't sit around. You've got to try to do things. Very seldom, uh, unless he's off his game, you're going to tack together a big inning against him. Runner goes again, and the payoff pitch missing up and away. Ball four. Back-to-back -back walks for Pedro to the bottom of the Texas order. The 8-9 hitters. Christensen walks. So does Chad Kruger. And the Rangers have two on with one out. And a little uh, meeting there between Veritek and Pedro. I think uh, that front shoulder for Pedro leaving just a little bit too soon, which is causing the elbow to drop, and a lot of these pitches are going up and away. Fix that little problem. It's very unusual in that three walks uh, as you move into the third inning here. Back up to the top of the order for Michael Young, who struck out swinging in the first inning. And grounded outside of first and foul. This is the first time the Texas Rangers have had a base runner to second base so far on the night. Fourteen games against Boston, a 319 total for Michael Young. A bit of a snag five for his last 31 over the last eight games dropping his batting average from 371 down to 273 coming into tonight's action Remember a few games ago I told you about the signs that Veritek was using with some pitches with the men in scoring position and just basically touching different parts of his body his shoulders his knees and sometimes the pitches are having some problems picking up those signs. Pedro missing away that time, one and one. This is one of the teams that I am told is very good about picking up signs. Really? So you will see Veritek go to a few different options tonight. Now Pedro apparently doesn't want those. Oh, there's the touches. Okay. Your peeps on the inside have told you this? Yes, my inside sources. Can't reveal who that is. Moles. Foul back into the seats quickly and out of play. So you can't tell us who that is. You're going to keep it to yourself. That's what good journalists do. <laughs> I'll go to jail if I have to. I can't even spell journalist. <laughs> well, you are a good one, even if you can't spell it. It's like looking up at the hitter. Make sure he's not looking back, peeking back. A lot of signs going on there from Jason Veritek. Now, what I can tell you about those signs, they're not as complicated as they may look. A certain spot will be a fastball. A certain spot will be, you know, all of Pedro's pitches. And then the next touch will be location. Is there an indicator like there is as a third base coach? It could be. Can't tell you, Don. Well, see, th this is so vague. Vague. I mean, why don't you? Uh... They, they tape these games, so they will know. See? Oh. I just feel like we're being robbed. You have all this knowledge and can't share it. I'll tell you what. I guarantee. Here comes a pitch. 
<laughs> Going way out on a limb. The one two. Got it softly over by the Boston dugout. Roberto is going to go out and talk to Pedro. While we have a moment, we do want to thank Jackson Chase, our great friend, who has come up with what I think are the best ribs I've ever had. And being the size that I am, I've had a great many ribs. I'm telling you, Jackson, this is the greatest rib of all time. It'll be crushed in between innings. I promise you that. We have ribs, we have sausage, we have towels for afterwards because Jerry gets a little messy. And we thank him very much. The one two. It's another piece. That one fouled off Veritek that time. Pretty tough at bat put on here by Young. Now, Pedro got himself in trouble work, uh, walking the eight nine hitters in the lineup, and now it's up at bat by Young. And Jackson wants to say hello to everybody in Haverhill. Everybody. <laughs> what do you say? He's been down here now 10 years with the Texas Rangers. In his 10th season with the Rangers. From Haverhill, Massachusetts. The at bat Pedro's had to expend a lot of energy here in the third inning. After he got Ruben Sierra to fly to right, walk Christensen and Kruder. And now two and two to Michael Young. Got him. Three strikeouts for Pedro, second time that he's gotten Michael Young, and there's two outs in the inning. Uh, he just uh, challenged Michael Young that time with the fastball. Last couple of fastballs from Pedro, the best that he's thrown so far in this game, up around 94, 95. Well, here comes a tough out so far this season. Hank Blaylock, the American League leader in hitting so far, 421 coming into tonight's action. He walked in the first inning. back down by the tarp area seems so strange to see the equal number of walks to strikeouts for Pedro Martinez in an outing but so far through two and two thirds three strikeouts and three walks next pitch will be the 25th of the inning for Pedro and the 42nd of his outing Now that is generally done the game plan for most teams that oppose Pedro Martinez. So what they want to try to do, and not always successfully, but they want to try to make him throw a lot of pitches early in the game, get him out of the game. See if they can get him to that 100 pitch limit so that he stays around by the sixth inning and take their chances with the bullpen. He's lunging after that pitch. It's kind of fun to watch how all the different teams approach Pedro Martinez because sometimes there are different theories. It does appear that that theory is the one that perhaps works the best. But we've seen some teams in the past to come out swinging at the first or second pitch and try to be more aggressive against Pedro. And Pedro senses that. He'll just throw those uh, two seam fastballs, get some early ground ball outs. <laughs> Saw Seattle do that last season against Pedro. They were hacking after that first or second pitch. Just off the inside edge. Pedro with his hands on his hips and gets a little motioning back from Randy Marsh who then gave him the count. You could tell Pedro a little disturbed by not getting that call on the corner. Runners at first and second with two away. Again, going deep into account. It's full now to Hank Blaylock. This man in scoring position, Pedro has picked that fastball up about uh, four miles an hour. He's going from about 90 to 94, 95 with the man in scoring position. Top liner, 
snare. Kevin Millar able to bring it in, and Pedro gets out of the inning unscathed despite walking two in the inning. We played three from Texas. Red Sox on top, 2-0. That's an old sign. <laughs> Here's Manny Ramirez to lead things off in the fourth inning. Lee <laughs> Moreau now retired by Chan Ho Park, who has settled into his outing after some rough pitches in the first inning that resulted in Boston hits. Red Sox came up with three hits and two runs in the first inning. But has really settled down very nicely since then. And he has one of those hits as he singled back in the first inning. Third baseman Hank Blaylock into foul ground for out number one. So one down. Time now for the Aflac trivia question. And our question tonight: Who are the only three players to hit 50 plus home runs and win a Gold Glove in the same season? We'll have the answer for you in the next half inning. One down for Kevin Millar. Grounded out to third base his first time. Millar has been struggling a little bit lately. One for his last 14 with six strikeouts over the last three plus games. After he started the season hitting in 14 straight. Alex Rodriguez throws him out for out number two. That's one of the guys with a gold glove and uh, 50 home runs. Mm -hmm. A Rod does not have an error yet on this season. It was kind of nice getting into Texas last night in daylight. The last couple of years we've gone from Anaheim to Texas, and we get in here about 5:30 in the morning. It's daylight when you get to bed. <laughs> but uh, we arrived nice and early yesterday, and. Uh, this year, I think the Yankees get to do what we've done the last couple of years. Start, oh, right? start in Anaheim and oh. then come here to Texas. And you lose time coming back this way. This way, we'll actually gain time when we leave Texas to go to Anaheim. Yeah. Which makes much more sense. And play a day game to boot in this three-game series, a third game in Texas. So we should get to Anaheim at a very reasonable time as well. And this is really, I think, when you look back to last season, the toughest trip of the year in regards to travel done the other way when you go to Anaheim first but uh, this seems much better. Ten in a row now retired by Chan Ho Park. The one two to Nixon thought about it did he go no Angel Hernandez the third base umpire said he didn't offer. One more look from the side shot, and uh, looks like a pretty good call there by Angel Hernandez. Nixon waves at that pitch, gets away from Pruder briefly. So he's got to step out and throw Nixon out, and he does so successfully. Second strikeout for Chan Ho Park. He's cruising now. He's retired 11 Red Sox in a row. Boston on top, 2 nothing. in Arlington the Red Sox and Texas Rangers opening up a three game series and the Red Sox off to a fine start tonight as they got two in the first inning and lead it two to nothing Todd Walker with an RBI double Manny Ramirez with an RBI single and Juan Gonzalez has the only Texas hit Pedro through three innings giving up no runs he's walked three and struck out three and Chan Ho Park has calmed down very nicely after that two runs he's now retired 11 Red Sox in a row. And here is a rod who grounded into a double play in the first inning. Yeah there's a strike to Rodriguez. Now Don somebody told me this guy was a pretty good player. 
Yeah, really? Is that right? <laughs> Is that another one of your sources you can't reveal? Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm anxious to watch him play a little. Yeah. Well, he got a lot of money, but if there's a player worth it in yeah, Major League Baseball, you'd have to say that it is Alex Rodriguez, and you have to be impressed with the way that that money, uh, you know, it hasn't changed him at all. As far as pressure goes, he's been able to continue to get the kinds of results that he had before getting a big long-term contract here in Texas. In his dealings with Pedro, Pedro generally has had the upper hand, only a 174 average for A Rod against Pedro Martinez. The 3 1. He'll take it for ball four. And that is walk number four given up by Pedro Martinez. Time now for the Athlete Trivia Question Answer. And our question from a minute ago. Who are the only three players to hit 50 plus home runs and win the gold glove in the same season? The day 65, Ken Griffey Jr., 97 and 98. And that man, A Rod, did it in 2002. I think the thing that impresses me most about him is the fact that he plays every day without any days off. In fact, tonight marks the 344th straight contest that he has played in for the Rangers. It's a club record for consecutive games played. And that's one of the things that impressed Jerry Naren, who, of course, managed him a year ago. They were way out of everything. They had an awful club, and he just wanted to continue to play right at the end of the season. There's Rafael Palmero, five home runs shy of 500. Or Palmero hit the last one on Saturday afternoon for the Texas Rangers to bring him within five. And a big cut that time. One and two. Active career ranks pretty impressive. it off you have to anticipate that he would be consistent with those kinds of numbers over the years he's had 35 plus home runs and 100 plus RBIs in each of the last eight seasons he's hit 22 home runs in his career against the Boston Red Sox but he has never hit one against Pedro Martinez waves at that pitch and Pedro gets his fourth strikeout of the night it's the first out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, that's a pitch that he basically could not throw in his last start because of the cold temperatures, but certainly a better grip on the baseball tonight and the good curveball there from Pedro Martinez. So one out. A-Rod standing at first base. Here's Juan Gonzalez, who has the only hit for the Texas Rangers tonight. Gonzalez singled. With one out in the second inning, he's thrown out trying to steal second base. On uh, a strike him out, throw him out. Double play that ended the inning. Hey, right at first base, certainly a threat to steal. He's got a couple so far this year has not been thrown out. First bluffs doesn't go and Veritek will snap it on down to first base as Rodriguez gets back with Millar holding him on. Uh, he was leaning towards second took a couple of quick steps as if he was stealing and that what that does it draws a middle infielder out of position because whoever has coverage at second base automatically takes a few steps toward the back thinking he's going. Time call, but Pedro fires over to first anyway. I don't think he realized the time was out at the time. So Pedro with four strikeouts and four walks tonight. He's given up one hit. And the 
Red Sox enjoy a 2-0 lead into the bottom of the fourth inning. Juan Gonzalez has a few home runs of his own. He's 33rd on the all-time list with 409 homers. Waves at that pitch from Pedro. See, that just throws the timing all off of Gonzalez. What Pedro did there, he used the slide step and then follows with the changeup. So everything's happening quick. All of a sudden, the changeup, ball's not there. A-Rod. Millar was heading down the line as if it was going to get by. He didn't make the catch, but it hits A-Rod in the back. Yeah, if it doesn't hit A-Rod, that ball's going down the right field line. Could have felt too good. <laughs> That's almost the same as getting hit at home plate. It is. The way Pedro fires it over there, it's almost the same thing. Long-awaited one-two in the dirt. Veritek can't find it. A-Rod breaks for second. The throw from Veritek sails in the right center field. Rodriguez will find himself at third with one out in the inning. Well, that's a huge break there. Uh, the changeup cannot be handled by Veritek. And as soon as it gets by him, they see A-Rod taking off for second. Probably should not have even thrown the ball. Had very little chance to get Rodriguez at second base. It's an errant throw because he rushed it. And he'll move up to third now with the one out. Here's the first error of the year for Jason Veritek. And the wild pitch. That got A-Rod to second base. The error by the catcher gets him to third. First runner to reach third for the Texas Rangers tonight. And the 2-2. Gonzalez. Sends it to short. No Myers only plays to first. Two down, but in from third comes A-Rod with Texas's first run of the night. And they cut the Boston lead in half. It's now two to one Red Sox. Yeah, they were going upstairs. Pedro was shooting for the strike out there with the man on third base in the infield back. But instead, Gonzalez uh, makes contact on the high fastball. And really pretty much a gift run right there for the uh, Texas Rangers. Two down, bases empty now for Carl Everett, who struck out swinging his first time. Laces a foul back into the seats. Now, when you're watching at home, when Veritas given the conventional signs with nobody on base, the pinky finger, that's for the cut fastball. The one finger down is for the fastball. Two's for the curveball. Three's for the uh, changeup. And there's the wiggle for the changeup, excuse me. Fastball away, fastball in, curveball, cut fastball. Well, did foul and stays foul. Kind of straddled the line and broke it bad for Carl Everett. We'll have to go get a new one. I wonder how often Pedro shakes off Jason Veritek. I know Ver uh, Derek Lowe. Very rarely does it all. Yeah, not a lot if you watch through the course of a game. It does happen, but not uh, not a lot. They're generally pretty much on the same page. Change up, fastball in, cut fastball, fastball away. This is to Everett, one and two. Well, Carl was not a member of the Red Sox, racking up some pretty good numbers against Boston. Now the changeup. Fooled him, and Everett has struck out for the second time tonight against Pedro. Five strikeouts for Martinez. The Rangers get one back. We played four from Texas. 2-1 Red Sox. On to the top of the fifth inning. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy with you from the ballpark in Arlington. The first visit of the year for the Red Sox to Texas. 11 in a row sent down by Chan Ho Park, and that will end. Jay Hillenbrand sends a single to right center field, and 
The Red Sox had the lead man on for the first time since way back in the first inning. And it was batting practice back in the first inning, and somehow uh, Chen Ho Park settled down. A lot of off-speed pitches to get out, but that time he tries to sneak the fastball by Hillenbrand, and Hillenbrand picks up the base in. Five straight games now for Shea. Well, despite not having a hit in the bottom of the fourth inning, the Texas Rangers getting a run of uh, Pedro Martinez, an unearned run at that. As the error charge to the Red Sox catcher Jason Veritek. Jeremy Giambi grounded out to second base his first time up. Quick check on Helen Brand, whose lead was not very large at all. Chan Hope Park, one and two, coming into tonight's outing. His fifth appearance, a 7.02 ERA. Best season for Chan Hope Park in his career was an 18 win season in 2000. He was a member of the L.A. Dodgers, was 18 and 10 that year, and 34 starts for the L.A. Dodgers. They posted double figures in wins in previous years, won 15 games in 98, 14 games in 97, 13 game winner in 99, and 15 game winner in 2001. So fairly consistent for Chan Ho Park. Taking all the way in the 3 0 pitch, Jeremy Giambi gets the walk. It's just the second walk given up by Chan Ho Park. First two base runners have reached. Well, get the Globe's award winning sports coverage every day. Call 1 800 984 5335 for 50% off home delivery. The Boston Globe, your world, unfolding daily. The catcher Chad Kruder out to talk to Channahoe Park briefly. The Red Sox have the first two reach here. Dylan Brand via the base hit. Jeremy Giambi with the walk. And it brings up the number nine man, Jason Veritek, who grounded out to first base his first time up. Field defense for the Rangers expecting the possible bunt from Veritek of Blaylock in at third and El Palmero now has moved back just behind the runner at first base Giambi. William Park bluffing off the backside of the mound. Now the Red Sox playing their first opponent other than an American League East opponent so far this season is a lot of the Toronto's the Tampa Bay's and Baltimore Orioles to begin the season but they get their first look at the Texas Rangers, who also have spent the entire year in their division. As they had played nothing but American League West foes coming into tonight's action. Yeah, they've got the West. They had, you know, Oakland and Seattle and Anaheim. And now they get the Red Sox, and then they get the Yankees coming in after. So they have yeah. had a very difficult <laughs> April. And that's what Kyle Everett was talking about yesterday. <laughs> Tell not please with the schedule makers. Well, the Red Sox will now play 24 consecutive games outside of their division. The Sox will play Texas, Anaheim, Kansas City, and Minnesota exclusively between tonight and May 19th. And that's when they will finally welcome the New York Yankees to Fenway Park to begin their 2003 season series with the Yankees. In the air to left center field. Not hit hard. Everett got a late break and he won't get there. Coming around from second is Shea Hillenbrand to score. Jason Veritek with an RBI single. And the Red Sox lead by two again. This time it's three to one Boston. Well, that is again excellent base running by Shea Hillenbrand. You know, so many times I, I mentioned the fact that when you're on second base, you've got to know where the outfield is playing. You look around, you take a peek and see how deep they are. He read that perfectly. That ball was hit high, but he knew that nobody was going to catch that, and he'll come across and score on it. And most players would not even have uh, probably just have gone to third base on that. Dylan Brand made the perfect read, scores a run. 
And under the top of the order, Johnny Damon walked and scored in the first inning, then struck out, bunts at it down the third base line, but it kicks foul. And there's virtually no dirt on the lines here as the grass almost comes right up to where the line is down the first and third base lines. You know something, Don? I I'm all for the sacrifice bunt, mm -hmm. but I think at a time like this, you got a chance to knock this guy around silly. And I think you're almost doing him a favor by giving him an out. What are we looking at? Lines? We're looking at the lines. I was just talking about how closely the grass oh, comes yeah. to the lines. That's real good for bunters. I looked quickly at the monitor. And I had no yeah, idea. You, you didn't know what was going on there. I, mean, <laughs> I said that the grass comes pretty close to where the line is. Yeah, that's and an excellent that point. And that's, and that's a good, that's great for bunners. The more grass, the better. I see your point, too. Channel Park really was on the ropes in the first inning. Appears to be on the ropes again here in the fifth inning. After he had been cruising right along, and Damon swings away, sends it to shortstop. A lot of English on that one. Rodriguez on the first for the double play. Nicely done, and the Red Sox had a run to their total. It's now 3-1 Boston. I told you you should have been buttoned. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I can't argue with that. I, I just think this is the kind of pitcher out here where, you know, you, you got a chance to put together a real big inning against him, and I wouldn't do him any favors by bunting, you know, unless it was maybe a little later in the game. That time, he gets the break uh, from Damon. He gets that little weak round ball, a shortstop, and A-Rod turns it into a double play. So Giambi moves over to third base. And the catcher Cruder out to talk to Chan Ho Park. Line total. So Cruder out to talk to Park briefly. There was action earlier in the Texas Rangers bullpen. to Todd Walker one for two Walker doubled in the first inning and scored and grounded out to second base in the third inning his double in the first drove in Boston's first run and gave him his ninth RBI of the year and a strike right down the middle one and one Well, we have seen bigger crowds here in Texas than we see here tonight. First visit of the year for the Red Sox. This is line to right field, a base hit for Walker. In from third comes Jeremy Giambi as Gonzalez collects the baseball in right field and RBI single for Todd Walker. Second hit, second RBI, and the Red Sox lead it four to one. Bad breaking ball just stayed uh, up high, about thigh high, and got an awful lot of the plate. Walker was three for nine against the park coming into the game. He is now two for three with a couple of RBI in this one. And that's going to bring out, it looks like, Oral Hirschheiser. He told me he was a pretty good pitcher, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, he makes his way out. Second time we've seen Oral Hirschheiser in the game. That's a big two out base hit by Walker. They have the double play. Looks like Park may get out of the inning with only the one run. Instead, Walker with the two-out hit. And the Red Sox have a couple of runs now in this inning. Esteban Yan, former Tampa Bay Devil Ray. A familiar face, to say the least. Chan Ho Park had erased 11 Red Sox in a row coming into this inning, but the Red Sox again doing for two runs, and here's Nomar. Garcia Parra tonight has singled and flied to left field. Yesterday off after starting the first 18 games of the season. You know, there's a lot of fans wondering why Nomar would get a day off so early in the year, but I think that's pretty important probably for 
even if it is a star player to get some time off. Line to center field. Christensen coming on. Able to make the catch hung up long enough. So the Red Sox are gone in the fifth, but not before they score twice. 4-1 Boston. Back in Texas, 4-1. Red Sox on top as a result of two runs in the top of the fifth inning. And the bottom third of the Texas Rangers order featured here in the bottom of the fifth for Pedro Martinez. Ruben Sierra fly to right field his first time up 0 for 1 tonight. Pedro has struck out five he's walked four and still only given up one hit through the first four innings he gave up a base hit to center field to Juan Gonzalez back in the second inning and that has been it. behind Sierra 3 and 0 oh. and walks him on four pitches to begin things here in the fifth time now for the Heineken what's on tap well Wednesday and Thursday games two and three of this series tomorrow night our coverage begins at 7 30 a day game on Thursday with the action on Nesson and it's off to take on the world champion Anaheim Angels the UPN 38 in the Boston area Nesson outside the Boston area Friday Saturday and Sunday's game will be the national game on ESPN and that will conclude this two city tour on the road for the Red Sox beginning here in Texas and ending in Anaheim. Ryan Christensen walked his first time up and takes strike one from Pedro. Hold off the right side, back and out of play. And it's 0 and 2 to Christensen. Just missing that time one and two. This is starting his seventh straight game in center field for the Texas Rangers. As Pedro has to the bottom third walked three Texas Rangers down there in the bottom third of this order. Chopped down the third baseline and foul. Hillbrand able to capture it in foul ground. Seventy five pitchers right now in his outing thirty nine for strikes that number normally much higher. Yeah and that's that uh, very unusual number there for Pedro. This is popping it up off first Millar ranging over into foul territory to take care of out number one. Let's check in with Tom Karen Tom. All right, Don, thanks very much. Here on the fourth floor of the office park that uh, closes in the center field here. They're making a big deal out of Rafael Palmeiro closing in on 500 home runs as they should. There's a guy up above me, Rich Miner, who's got to sit up there until he gets that 500 home runs, at least on game nights, because as soon as he hits home run, Rich has to run over to the sign and drop a new sign that has the updated number. So they wouldn't let me up there. They were worried about my safety because we are pretty high up, as I found out when I dropped my pen a few minutes ago. Guys? All right, Tom, thanks very much. As Chad Cruder bunting pops it up foul back into the seats. I never really understood what the, that whole thing was out there. I guess uh, it is a bunch of different office offices uh, for different companies out there. It's not just the Texas Rangers front office, but uh, you can actually put your office building right out there. And a lot of local companies take advantage of that. Kind of need to have their offices right here at the ballpark in Arlington. And that's what a lot of those are out there in center field. Lots to look at in this ballpark. Very busy. As I called it last year, it's visually exciting. <laughs> this one is fouled back to the backstop. It's not one of my favorites, Don. To be you don't honest like with this? I, 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 I don't dislike it, yeah. but it's not Camden Yards, and in my opinion, Jacobs Field. I like it. I don't like how hot it gets down here in the middle of the summer, but I do like it. 
And I think I really like the right field thing. I think is my favorite part of it where it is double decked out there and right. The 0 2 is grounded right side. Walker ranges to his left, gets the lead runner at second, and that's all he can get this time as Ruben Sierra is erased, and there's two outs. Yeah, you could see Walker, too, there. He knew by how hard the ball was hit that he was not going to get a double play, so he didn't even try to rush this. He just made sure that he gave Garcia Parra the good feed there to get that force out. Nomar didn't even try to get the double play. Get that lead man, keep him out of scoring position. Two down, back up to the top of the order for Michael Young, who is 0 for 2, struck out in the first and then in the third inning. So he has two of the five strikeouts that Pedro Martinez has tonight. That time, get him by it at 91 miles per hour. Michael Young getting the start at second base. So started 18 of the first 20 Texas games at second base. And falls behind one and two. Very good defensive player. That's a nice combination they have out there with the Michael Young and. Alex Rodriguez. Pretty strong in the middle of the infield here for the Texas Rangers. The one two line and caught at second base by Walker to end the inning. Texas gone four one Boston. Red Sox lead. Stay tuned after the game for W.B. Mason's Extra Innings, New England's Red Sox postgame show with extra highlights, extra interviews, and extra analysis hosted by Bob Rogers and a new lineup of studio analysts. After the last inning, the action is just beginning. Now look at the ballpark in Arlington as we head to the top of the sixth inning. And Manny Ramirez with a big cut to get it started. Ramirez is one for two tonight. He singled in the first inning. Fouled out to first in the fourth. Then he'd be followed by Kevin Millar and Trot Nixon here in the sixth inning. Against Chan Ho Park who works into the sixth inning. One two to Manny. Red Sox get to Chan Ho Park for two in the first inning, and they add two more in the fifth inning. Up and away that time to Manny, one and two. What a day yesterday for Ramirez. Four hits as he went four for five against Toronto. Now it's 10 for his last 21 as Manny's starting to heat it up a little bit. And it took a great catch by uh, Shannon Stewart against that left field wall. And he would have been five for five in that game. It was a great catch. Watched it a few times last night at some of the highlight reels that they played over and over again. And Rob Manny of a hit. Now ready, and Manny will back out. Well, Pedro Martinez tonight through the first five innings has struck out five, but he has walked five. And given up just one unearned run so far tonight for the Red Sox on their start from Pedro Martinez. And you have to wonder about career highs in that category. The most walks Pedro's ever had in his career is seven in a game. This was a member of the Montreal Expos at the time that against Atlanta. The most with the Red Sox going to go back to 1998 against the New York Yankees on September 8th when he walked six. But tonight so far five walks for Pedro Martinez. Randy Marash has been uh, very much a hit as umpire tonight but consistently so. Uh, neither pitcher has really got the benefit of the doubt on the corners tonight. Yeah. 
They are pitched wide in the left field for a base hit. Now Manny's torrid pace continues. He is second hit of the night. He's aboard to begin things in the sixth inning. Now that's when you know you're swinging the bat pretty well. You know Manny gets a 3-2 changeup. And watch how well he's able to keep those hands back and uh, picks up the base hit. In the three and two, you, you're thinking of fastball and throws a changeup and Manny's able to stay back and hit the ball hard. He may be on uh, he may be right now you know take it off on a pretty good tear. Here's Kevin Millar is 0 for 2 is grounded to third and to shortstop. And that hit by Ramirez he's now 11 for his last 22. Deep to left, down the line. Everett moving back towards the wall into the corner. Dives, and can he make the catch? Yes, he can. Now trying to get back is Ramirez. He will get back. Sliding back into the bag at first, and Everett up against the wall and left below the 354 marker. Hauls it in. When that ball left the bat, I thought for sure that Millar had himself a home run. He got that inside fastball, and this really goes out. Look at 332 to 354. That gives Everett some room to leap and make that catch. A fine play by Carl Everett going a long way. Well, Everett had a very long way to go. We've been used to seeing him not move all that well in the outfield with all the knee problems that he had at the end of his Red Sox career and his beginning of his Texas Rangers career but he got around pretty well there deep and far down the left field line to rob Kevin Millar Everett looks to me to be in better shape than we've seen him in a couple of years mm -hmm. and maybe because of the physical problems are not any longer there he's able to get himself in a better shape sometimes you get knee problems uh, it's very easy to get out of shape not much you can do here's Trot Nixon who's 0 for 2 tonight Trot fly to right in the first and struck out in the fourth inning. Line to right. That's in for a base hit. And he will move up to second base. As up with it in right is Gonzalez. And he fires it back in quickly. Manny had to dive back to the bag at second. And Chan Ho Park uh, not fooling anybody this inning. Another hanging breaking ball and uh, when you throw one like that, you're fortunate it stays in the ballpark. Top spin line drive. He took a great catch by Carl Everett just to get the one out in this inning. We'll bring up Shea Hillenbrand, who singled and scored an inning ago. One for two in the ball game tonight. Missing inside is Chan Ho Park. Red Sox are out hitting the Texas Rangers eight to one in the game. And Shea's ahead quickly two and zero. Oh. This might be it too for Chan Ho Park. You got the left hand of Giambi on deck, and I believe they have left handed action down in that bullpen. Brian Schaus who was in the and it is Brian Schaus in the Texas bullpen lunging that time was Hillenbrand Red Sox have been three for seven in the ball game tonight with runners in scoring position with three RBIs Ramirez at second, Nixon at first, and Hillenbrand slashes it foul. Oh, another bad breaking ball. That time the slider right out over the plate. Hillenbrand very upset with himself for, for missing that one. with the 2-2 two -two. and he strikes out Hillenbrand. Big cut from Shea. He is strikeout victim number three for Chan Ho Park and out number two here in the top of the sixth inning. Chan Ho Park who goes down to one knee 
after making that pitch looked like he uh, slipped something in, in the delivery and that's going to bring uh, Showalter and the trainer out of the dugout. His uh, ankle just collapsed on him. Thought that might be the last hitter he would face anyway, but they're going to let him do some warm-up tosses here, so apparently it is not if he can continue. Hitter is scheduled to be Jeremy Giambi. Ryan Schaus, the left hander, has been warming in the bullpen. And Schaus just now kind of looking on. Former member of the Red Sox, Ryan Schaus, who pitched in Boston in 1998, making seven appearances in a Red Sox uniform and not come into the game just yet. As Chan Ho Park apparently is all right and will stay in the game to face Jeremy Giambi. Yami is grounded out to second base and walked tonight. Came around to score Boston's fourth run in the fifth inning. Oh. Well, he offers his home plate umpire Randy Marsh. Slugging a home run, his second of the season. Against Toronto's Roy Halliday over the weekend. Part of that great comeback for the Red Sox when they were dealing with the 5 0 deficit against Toronto and, of course, came back to win 6 to 5. Jeremy Giambi was a great deal a part of that comeback. And, of course, Nomar with the game winning, not only the game winning, but the game tying as well prior to that. The two run double to tie at 5 5. Giambi sends it right up in the air around home plate. Chad Kruder in foul ground makes the catch to retire the side. Red Sox leave a pair. We played five and a half from Texas. Red Sox on top four to one. Thank you. 
position deep right up against the wall. Here's A-Rod, who's 0 for 1 with a walk tonight, and he scored the only Texas run. Well, Robert Person continues to try to get back here to Boston for his first time, but uh, back with the Red Sox after being with them in spring training. And a strikeout as Alex Rodriguez strikes out. It's the sixth strikeout for Pedro Martinez, two down. Find the ladder with Rodriguez that time, the high fastball. A-Rod has now struck out 24 times this season. He is among the league leaders uh, in that category. Tied with Eric Hinsky now with 24 strikeouts to lead the lead. Two down here's Rafael Palmiro, who's 0 for 2 tonight. And Robert Person pitched for Sarasota tonight at Dunedin, going an inning in two thirds, giving up two hits, no runs. He didn't walk anybody, and he struck out one. Going to stretch him out a little bit, and get him some more work down there in Florida before having him join Pawtucket. member of the Boston DL Matt White a left hander going from a mound apparently but uh, not yet close to coming back and making any rehab appearances for the Red Sox now the 2 1 to Rafael Palmero this is inside and Pedro's behind three and one We got the Delgado shift on with the Palmero at the plate. In the air to right center field. Damon heading back. It's a big outfield, and Johnny Damon has room to make the catch. A one, two, three, bottom of the sixth inning for Pedro Martinez. We played six from Texas, 4 1 Boston. In Texas, Jason Veritek got after the first pitch. Michael Young standing in foul ground. The Texas second baseman to make the catch. And Veritek is quickly out number one in the seventh inning. Chan Hall Park back out there for the seventh inning. And he's retired the first member of the Red Sox that he faces here in the seventh. Johnny Damon about to get his fourth look at Chan Hall Park tonight. Johnny looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Ten of the last 14 hits for Johnny Damon. They've gone for extra bases. Six doubles and four homers. And he sends it foul beyond the Texas dugout on the first base side. Well, the fans get to see the outside of this facility, of course, uh, with our pictures. But to the inside of this facility is very nice. The clubhouses are as nice as you will find anywhere in the big leagues and very big and roomy. And one interesting thing that they've done in the visiting clubhouse on the Red Sox side is that uh, they have kept Cal Ripken's locker the same as it was for his last time through here in the ballpark in Arlington. They've actually put up a big plexiglass and everything that was in there that day is still in there. to Damon is fouled back and below us full count now to Johnny well, the guy just embarrassed himself in front of his wife <laughs> and two young daughters by dropping that pop up Damon sends it foul again to the backstop Well, Chan Ho Park has given up four runs in this outing tonight, but on several occasions looked like he was a pitch away from being out of this game, but somehow it stayed in. Yeah, I'd have to say he's uh, very fortunate to be, still be in this game. I mean, he's thrown a lot of stuff right over the middle of the plate. At times, the Red Sox looks like they were getting ready just to knock him out of the ball game, and somehow he gets an out. 
Noel Hershiser's made a few trips out to talk to Chan Ho Park. Lehman That's another one. Sends it again. Foul. Over towards the stands. Palmiro reaching in makes the catch. Found out where he was and put his hand right on the railing and then made the catch with the glove for out number two. I think those are new seats there, John, uh, out to the right of the dugout of the Texas Rangers. And they come out about three or four rows. Palmero running out of room, but he can just brace himself and uh, reach a little bit higher than the fans. I don't recall those seats being there last year. I don't either. It's the only place that looks like they have added seats. Uh, just those two rows right there. Walker first pitch swinging sends it foul off the left side. Todd has two hits tonight and two runs batted in. He doubled in the first inning and singled in the fifth. Before I forget, Don, I've got to send birthday wishes to Big Bob Manley. Big Bob. Big Bob friend of Tommy McLaughlin because Tommy's with us on this road trip through uh, Texas and California right back to the mound and Chan Ho Park will erase Walker it's a one two three seven four one Boston bottom of the seventh inning Juan Gonzalez to lead it off for the Texas Rangers with the Red Sox on top four to one Gonzalez has the only Texas hit tonight. Pedro has uh, one hitter going tonight, but he has walked five. And this has really been a strange outing. It has. <laughs> it, it, you can't sit here and say that Pedro's got uh, his unbelievable stuff tonight. But, but yet, there's only one hit on the board. He has walked five. And against a pretty good lineup. He has struck out six tonight. You're right, it has been a very strange outing tonight. Juan Gonzalez watches that go by for a ball. And Pedro has reached the century mark, 100 tonight, but only 57 strikes. That's a staggering number, especially for Pedro Martinez. A 1 2. And then it misses to Gonzalez, 2 and 2. Do you notice anything different from him tonight at all? I think the one thing I noticed more than any other start this year, he kind of seems like he's dropping his elbow a little bit, though. I don't know if that's a result of the front shoulder flying out. I mean, here we are complaining about a guy that's given up one hit, but it has been kind of... Oh, that is a nasty hook. In there for strike three. Seventh strikeout tonight for Pedro Martinez. Is he doing some stretching? Yeah, it looks that he's way. Like... Maybe there's some tightness in his side that's causing that. But uh, that last curveball was ugly. I mean, it was uh, right at Gonzalez. He'll flinch. Once you flinch, forget about it. One down, and it brings up Carl Everett, who's 0 for 2. He struck out twice. And takes strike one. Of course, Pedro has not been talking to the media lately, which is something that uh, I'm guessing will probably not last very long. That is one area that Pedro is extremely good in, is dealing with the media as Everett sends it into center field for a base hit. Off his old teammate, Pedro Martinez, and that's only the second Texas hit tonight. And he struck out to Everett the first two at bat, so this time Everett jumps on a changeup to pick up the base hit. The first base coach is DeMarlo Hale. He uh, is a former member of the Red Sox organization, a manager, I believe, in the minor leagues for the Red Sox. Managed in Trenton. Carl Everett at first, one down. Ruben Sierra, 0 for 1 with a walk. And a big swing there. Pedro Martinez, as I mentioned, uh, joining Manny Ramirez as far as not talking to the media in between starts or after starts. Well, the difference is Manny can make that last. I don't think Pedro can. I don't think he can either. I hope he does. No. He's been very nice with us the entire time. He stopped by last night on the plane on the way by. Still very friendly and outgoing the same Pedro, but 
Going through a stretch right now where he is not talking to the media. And that's in there for a strike. Action in the Boston pen for the first time tonight. Big Mike Timlin warming up. Ruben Sierra fly to right in the third inning, walked in the fifth. Sierra, who was first a member of these Texas Rangers back in 1986. He was with Texas from 86 through 1992, then Oakland and the Yankees, the Tigers, the Reds, the Blue Jays, the White Sox. <laughs> back to Texas again for two years. Seattle for a year, now back in Texas. His third go-around with the Texas Rangers in a very long career. Line to right, and a base hit headed for the corner. Carl Everett heading for third as Nixon digs it out, but not before Ruben Sierra stands at second base, and all of a sudden, the Rangers have two in scoring position with one down. Ruben Sierra has always been a tough out for Pedro Martinez. An 0-2 fastball from Pedro. I'm sure he wanted to go much deeper inside than what he got this pitch, and Sierra cleans it out for the base hit. Hey, one thing, Ruben's up there hacking against Pedro. He's not intimidated. Brady Little coming out to the mound. Now there's here's action. You mentioned the fact that Timlin was loosening up. Very seldom do you see Pedro Martinez come out of a game in the middle of an inning. And Brady out there for a strategic conversation this time. And still appears to be doing some stretching on that side. Here is Ryan Christensen. He walked in the third, fouled out to first base in the fifth. 0 for 1 tonight. And on the hands, he pops it up foul. Veritek with a play. Two down. Now well, that's even better than getting the strikeout. You get a guy on the first pitch to chase a bad pitch. And then you get that little pop-up to the catcher. Not much patience shown there by Christensen with men in scoring position. He jumps in that first fastball that's up and in. And Veritek will take a peek up and get the second out of the inning. Rangers are now 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position tonight. As Sierra remains at second base, Carl Everett at third, two down. And here's Chad Kruder, veteran catcher. One for 14 the Texas Rangers uniform this year for Kruder. Chad Kruder has been in the major league since 1988. He broke in with the Texas Rangers. Thirty-eight-year-old catcher taking a ball, two and zero. Oh. Kruder, the last three years, was a member of the LA Dodgers. And last year, spending a good amount of time on the DL, only appeared in forty-one games with the Dodgers. And on the ground and foul just beyond the Texas dugout on the first base side. One of those at bats right here that could be uh, the ball game. I mean, you get a base hit here, all of a sudden it's a one run game. Pedro gets out of this inning. You still get that nice cushion with only six outs to go. Boston on top, four to one. Texas with two in scoring position and two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. In the dirt, Veritek able to box it down. Pedro had only given up one hit coming into this inning, but a single for Everett and a double for Ruben Sierra.
Ritter with a wild swing. Went up top that time as they climbed the ladder, and he has a full count now. Probably going to be ball four, but again, that, that high fastball is an awful tough pitch to lay off. It looks so good to the hitter coming in, but yet almost impossible to catch up to. Three two from Pedro is line foul down the left field line. Seven strikeouts so far for Pedro tonight through six and two thirds innings. That's a season high for Pedro had six a couple of games in the first two. He's thrown one hundred and fourteen pitches tonight. And he walks him. First base was vacant. It'll now be occupied by Chad Kruder. The number nine hitter is walked for the second time tonight. And that matches a Red Sox high for Pedro Martinez. He walked six back in 1998. Something's definitely bothering his side. I don't think there's any doubt about that, uh, Don. You saw him stretching out to between innings. He just did the same thing after that last pitch. And he's uh, right now at that uh, pitch count where they don't like to have him. No. Giving him a chance to get out of his own jam here, though, in the seventh inning. The base is loaded now. Two outs and Michael Young, the hitter, who's 0 for 3 tonight. He's struck out twice. Well, September 8th of 98 against the Yankees. He walked six. He has walked six tonight. It's over the direction of third base and brings the 1 0. It's called foul, 1 and 1. Mickey Young does not have a grand slam in his career. Spot here in the bottom of the seventh inning, a 1 1. Strike two. Now, as a hitter, Michael Young, you have no idea what to look for. Pedro's liable to throw anything change up, curveball, cut fastball. Not fun to be down in the count. Maybe with the 1 2 pitch. Time too far off the plate. He evens up at two and two. Yeah, I'm trying to put him away with the uh, high fastball. He has struck him out twice tonight with the fastball. After the touch signs with the runner at second and the two two again away. No lack of velocity there. 94 on that last pitch. Even this deep into his pitch count, the runners will be off with his pitch. The base is loaded and a full count to Michael Young. They come to their feet at the ballpark in Arlington. Got him. The biggest strikeout of the night for Pedro Martinez. He is eighth, and he gets out of a major jam. The Rangers leave him loaded in the seventh. We played seven full, 4-1 Boston.